Now a News 5 safety alert, don't be a victim. We have heard from a lot of viewers this week when it comes to personal protection. Many of you say forget the pepper spray and get a gun. But experts say just having a gun isn't enough. Here's News 5 Emily DeVoe to explain in part four of her series. Well, that's right, Peter. Having a gun makes people feel safer, but without training, it might hurt you more than help you. I learned a lot from my day at the gun range. Perfect shot. 30 minutes of training, and I can at least hit the target. You're thinking target shooting. Right. But okay. I need to be thinking defensive. Thinking somebody attacking you, kicking you in the front door of your house. Mindset. The reality is the average person who buys a gun for self-defense probably barely pulls it out of their bedside table. The mind is the weapon. If your mind is not sharp and prepared, whatever tool you have is not going to be good. Gun instructor Scott Thompson begins preparing my mind in the classroom. I'm using body mass to soak up recoil. Before we even get the gun out, he goes over the four golden rules. Number one. Always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction. Period. End of story. Number two. Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Number three, keep it unloaded until you're ready to use it. Defensive handgun is ready to be used at all times. So my theory on that is keep the gun unloaded once it's out of your control. And the fourth rule is always know what's behind your target. Is it a propane heater? Is it a child's bedroom? You need to know where the final resting place of that bullet's going to be. I like that. Time to hit the range. Good shot. I try out several different semi-automatic handguns until I find one that fits my grip. The biggest misconception of people uh, purchasing firearms, they think they want a small white gun. Uh, a small white gun is easier to conceal, but it is harder to shoot well. So leave those to the experts. This helps you tighten up this. After we get the swing of things, Scott shows me how to shoot one-handed because you have to be prepared for anything. Tighten up. Golly, you got it. It takes some getting used to, but let's face it, this cardboard target on a stick just isn't realistic. I'm sure it's a lot different shooting a cardboard target than someone that's actually running at you. Our photographer, Randy, grabs this rope attached to a wagon and takes off. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. My initial reaction? Scream. You can't go wait, wait, wait in the middle of a fight. Two hours of training out the window. Once my adrenaline starts pumping, it's nearly impossible to aim. Don't jump. Okay. Don't jump. Concentrate on the threat. Concentrate on the front sight. You didn't see the sights. No. Time is the thing you're always fighting for in a critical incident. So being aware of your surroundings, it gives you slightly more time. Time is everything. And if you choose a gun for your defense, training is just as critical. Do you buy a car without test driving it? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Think about it. What good is owning a firearm if you're not mentally armed to fire it? All right, very interesting. Emily, what was the hardest part of this story for you? Well, shooting it one-handed was actually a big challenge. Scott was saying if you're using it for defensive purposes, you actually have to practice with your dominant hand and your other hand because you never know if you're going to have to hold your kids back with one arm or you might get shot or if it's in the dark, you might need that free hand to hold up a flashlight so you can see who you're actually shooting with. So that kind of takes some practice. Any other big takeaways on the gun training? Uh, well, realistically, it'd be nice, you know, to go to the range and practice, but we know that's not very practical. You might not have the money, you might not have the time, so Scott suggested dry firing. That's when you empty out the gun, double check, make sure it's empty, sure. practice lining up those sights and just aiming and just doing that, you know, getting that repetitive motion in can also help you if you can't make it to the range. All right, it's a big responsibility. How about tomorrow? Wrapping up our series tomorrow. We are the last day. Tomorrow we're switching gears. We're talking about protecting your house. Safety inside the home is key, and tomorrow... On News 5, Scott Thompson shows us the steps to take criminals and keep them out of your home. A big focus is your door. That's right. The average door, even if it has a deadlock, isn't very much protection. I learned a lot of great tips, and I'll share them tomorrow in Part 5 of our series right here at 5 o'clock. All right. Looking forward to it. Thanks, Emily. Thanks.